welcome to the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost Word and Service at St. Paul Lutheran Church, East Lansing, Michigan. Today's Gospel starts with disciples obsessing who will be closer to Jesus, leading to Jesus teaching his followers about God's take on importance and power. Here Jesus makes explicit the reversal of God's values in God's community as a direct challenge to the values of the dominant culture. We're wielding power over others, what makes you great? When we pray your kingdom come, we are praying for an end of tyranny and oppression. We pray this gathered around the cross, the sign of great shame transformed to be the sign of great honor and service. So the Holy Spirit now calls us together as people of God. speaks to us. 
First of all, the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we, God speaks to the scripture, preaching, and song. Our first lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. This is, uh, reading is from the last of four passages in Isaiah that are often called servant songs. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we are like sheep and gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction to his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's Share Psalm 91 this month of faith. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no, no evil, evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon and their hands they will bear you, you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will, I will deliver, deliver those, those who cling to me. me. I will uphold them, them because they, they know my name. name. They will call me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long, long life will I satisfy and show them my, my salvation. salvation. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his, his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. 
and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's Holy Gospel is the book of St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, the disciples asked Jesus to grant them seats of honor. Jesus responds by announcing that he and his followers will rule through self-giving service. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What does he want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism for which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that amongst Gentiles, those who they recognize their rulers, lorded over them, the great ones who were tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace for God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, my friends, we want to win at all costs. Winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. We want to dominate and defeat our enemies. We want to win. Every person, each person is on their own. If you cannot play the game, stay off the field. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. We'll play another one bites the dust. When we win, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the focus on our society. When they talk about, like for example, football games, they talk about a team, they talk about the quarterback. Well, there's many people, 22 players that play any given time or more, and it's not just the quarterback, because without the people on the line, those who serve the quarterback would not be able to be effective. It's interesting because when I asked my grandkids, how was your, the game, they really respond with either, we won or we lost. Well, that's not what I was asking them. Did they and their team play to the best of their ability? Did they have fun? Did everyone display good sportsmanship? I'm on the executive board of the Mid-Michigan Pony Football League, which encompasses fourth and sixth grade. It used to be through uh, eighth grade, but the middle school has taken that over. And there's 19 communities. There's Belling from the west. There's St. John's from the north, northwest Jackson from the south, East Lansing on the east, and several in between. The games are played between August and the end of October. This league is held together by all of these different size schools and, and um, all the different perspectives by a common set of rules. And what we say is that these rules are in play if they, that they differ from the Michigan School Athletic Association. We follow those rules, but plus the ones that we give them. And of course, all coaches and officials, they always grumble every year, must attend a mandatory meeting each year where these rules are presented, and for good reason. And, of course, coaches must be certified by USA Football. The officials must be, uh, must be certified by MHSAA. The number one purpose of the rules is the safety for everyone, especially the players. 
the other purpose is, of course, to make sure everybody plays. But to, to let you know how this works, the purpose of the league is spelled out clearly as to provide and establish a wholesome youth football league to promote sportsmanship and fair play where all players get an opportunity to play each game, the emphasis on teaching character, athletic and social skills, and a healthy attitude. Winning is not the most important objective. Where coaches teach and lead through example. Also, we make it clear the officials are there to help teach the players about the game. That's their function. They call penalties, which has a lot of times that safety, or they have to, the, the young people have to learn the rules of the game but also they will educate, and a lot of it is to make sure safety, like for example, helmet on helmet, uh, no horse collar tackle, those type of things are in safety, and a lot of times they have to educate. This is why you can't do this when they call the penalty. And we make it clear the officials are there to help teach the players about the game. And there's been controversy about such young players playing football I know there was a physician in uh, Grand Ledge would not give physicals to young people for football, but we were founded to promote a healthy, typical American contact sport for the youth in your specific area. If young people play football with or without proper equipment or supervision, we feel providing proper protective equipment, playing fields, and supervising personnel, injuries will be at a minimum. And this is important. So yes, the MFPFL recognizes the valid criticism of other programs, but the good done by the program will weigh the harm derived from the undue mental pressures placed upon you by the need to win. For this reason, the MMPFL has no championships or playoffs, no individual player awards or recognition. Okay, and people you know, say, well, you, you're going to get a trophy being a participant. You don't get a trophy. For, for anything, everybody, we don't put stickers on helmets. We, we definitely don't give them the karate trophies and for, for better players. We don't separate the players because it is a team sport and all players are important. That doesn't mean to say we didn't emphasize winning, but the emphasis rather is on good sportsmanship, teamwork, and team discipline. You always heard the expression, there is no I in team. The unwavering desire to win at all costs is what is being emphasized in our program. Because we find when people want to win, they tend not to follow the rules. And either safety or other items, you know, or the kids see their, their coach that's cheating because he's not following the rules. And that's why winning can create issues. The youth play a good hard game and one team will lose each time. And that's the way it should be. The MMPFL wants the half that loses to be proud players and parents take pride in their program that have been developed in their community. So it's pretty simple. What I was, as a coach, what I would start to have a parent meeting, I said, officials educate the players, coaches coach, and parents spectate, and hopefully displaying good sportsmanship. In fact, we have many communities that have the parents sign a code of conduct. And you ask, why is that? Well, People can lose perspective. The irony of all this is you not have to teach children the desire to win. Children want to win. The interesting thing, though, I notice when these games are over, if they don't win, the kids are running around with the other people they're playing against and they're having a great time, and they've forgotten about it. Of course, in any given contest where you cannot tie, there is a winner and a loser, and that's life. That's why we try not to have people to run up scores because you you can you can win the if you win the game you don't want to uh, bury the other person with an op, a lopsided score so the irony of all this it's the irony of all this people will pray for a good grade or, the, or for the team to win here's the issue with that if both sides pray to Jesus they want to win how is Jesus to Choose one or the other. Well, these people are better than this people, or they paid higher than these people, or this or that. No. It's the same thing if grades are on a curve, if someone gets a better grade, it knocks down the grade of their classmate. So this segues into me how I envision the rule book for Christians. 
It is well documented in Scripture. We are to love God and put God first, and we are to love all others, the children of God. We have God's very spirit to guide us. Galatians 5, 22-26 says, By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the young people are learning that. You see the board when you come in. You'll see those listed there. There's no a law against such things, and those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its past and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, compete against one another, envying one another. And of course, this is opposed to the works of the flesh, which are sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrel, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, Galatians going to say, as I warned you before this, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If we do things for the glory of God, this means we're humble and we accept all children of God. We treat each other with respect and dignity, with great joy. We strive for peace, not division. It's about getting along together. We're patient, and you have to be patient in our world because we find in situations where things can be quite disturbing, but we have to be patient and use kindness as we are generous in helping others and will strive to be faithful to God, not for our own sake, not to be the victor, not hail to the victor, but for the sake of God, for the glory of God. We cannot earn our salvation, but we can rely on God because our faith in Christ keep us in his grace and hold us blameless so we have a close personal relationship with God through eternity. Now, my friends, that is winning. There are no winners and losers of the faithful, only winners. Remind me of a story I heard some years back about a person of ELC, Lutheran, went up to heaven, and uh, St. Peter says, let me give you a tour. He says, you got to be really quiet. You get a step up, not really be seen. And you open up a door, and here's the Baptists, and the next one, the Presbyterians, and the next one, the Cats, all these different people, and over here are the other type of Lutherans, and, and whatever. And uh, after they were done with her, he said, why did you want me to be so quiet? He says, well, each of those rooms, they believe they're only they're the only people in heaven. And that's what we can do. But were James and John good sports? Or were they more interested in success, power, and glory? The others didn't feel they were being good sports and got angry at them, one in a special place. When they said to Jesus, grant us what we asked. I thought that was rather audacious. Yeah, grant us whatever we ask for, Jesus. You go, oh yeah, what? You want a new bike? I mean, you want a good grade? What, what is it you want? But he's granted us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. And of course, in Matthew, we heard how the wife of Zebedee, their mother, also asked her sons to sit with Jesus in glory in heaven. And Jesus just totally turns these requests on his head when he says, they do not know what they're asking, and those that wish to become great among them must be a servant, and whoever wishes to be first among them must be slave of all. They're not to be rulers who are tyrants over others, but should serve others. That's how you, that's your greatness. And of course, this flies in the face of our societal and certainly political values in this time of year. This is why fewer and fewer people, of course, are coming to church. Churches burst to the scene where something is promised if you give, you'll get much more in return, get more material things. And bad things will not happen to you. If someone does you wrong, you will triumph over them. If only you are faithful enough. Of course, the limitation for me to preach these attractive features is not possible because they're not the truth. And I will preach the truth, and Jesus is in the truth. 
Belief in Christ does not make us immune for bad things happening, and there are no guarantees what we will give will bring us more material wealth. In fact, it's not about us at all. It's about God and Christ while God's Spirit nurtures us as we serve others, knowing we will be okay, regardless. The payback to us is priceless. We experience heaven on earth and hope amid our trials and tribulations and will be a close personal relationship with Christ, with God. My friends, this is good news indeed. One of the things that happens when people die earlier than we had anticipated, that may happen. We don't understand why that happens. It doesn't seem fair. But what happens is we find people leave legacies. We had the young man that was, was killed over in the Middle East and just very, very young, and he died. But that young man, he left a legacy. He was trying to help others. We have others, for example, and maybe we're here and they work, they work in the food pantry, they work in the garden, they work whatever, they did work here, and this, we're part of their legacy. And if they're great gardeners, they're, they're flowers that still grow, that is their legacy. So they left a legacy. And so the other part, we don't understand, only God understands, but we know we'll understand when we finally become close to God. And we'll understand. So my friends, I should you go humbly as you welcome, invite, love, give people a safe place to come and worship weekly when we serve others. And that's the legacy that people that have been here before have left. The saints have gone before us. Amen. If
share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, my friends, we listen as we join in the prayers of the church. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Holy One, we give thanks for all servant leaders of the church. Bless bishops, pastors, and deacons with humble wisdom and ground them in your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creative One, we give thanks for the delicate balance of the natural world. Kindle in us a spirit of caring strength in the preservation of habitats, food availability, and centers of refuge that all wildlife may thrive. God of grace, hear our prayer. Empowering one, fill the leaders of governments with a spirit of service that prioritizes those on the margins due to job loss, under underemployment, unsafe working conditions, and immigration. Many economic, may economic equality be achieved for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Restoring one, send your angels to watch over, rescue, and protect those who are injured or ill. Nurse those who suffer hardship, disease, injury, or difficulty with your comfort and peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. Abiding one, we call pastors to shepherd the congregation toward faithful living as servants and followers of Jesus. Inspire all ordained ministers and seminarians to ministry that challenges, engages, and comforts those in their care. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Protecting one. We pray for those who strive to protect our nation, provide care and compassion for those who serve in our armed forces, especially Beth and Ryan, Jonathan, Jacob, Noah, Irene, and Alex. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Merciful one. We pray for those who are bowed down with illness or sorrow, and those who are undergoing transition in relationships, occupation, living situation, or health condition, especially Aaron, Carolyn, Craig and family, Dan, David, Doretta, Jim and Sherry, John, 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 Jordan, Kay, Lawton, Lyra and family, Liam, Linda, Lizzie, Marge, Mary, Pastor Sarah, Randy, Rick and Kathy, Sherry, Sherry, and Wanda, and all that we name now aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Directing one. We pray for our church's leaders, presiding Bishop Elizabeth, our synod Bishop Craig, Pastor Carl. We ask that you be with their respective staffs as they live out their callings to serve. As we are called to be one, even as Jesus and the Father are one, be with the leaders and the congregation of Lebanon Lutheran Church in Whitehall and all the churches in our community. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Saving one. We give thanks for the disciples, James and John, and all the saints who have faithfully served you. We rejoice in the promised place at the Feast of Victory that we receive by your door grace alone. God of grace. Hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the saving grace you freely give both now and forever. Amen. Let's share the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. 
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lord, remember she came and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, firm and ever. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you and keep you and give you peace. Thanks be to God.